Hi everyone, welcome to Lola's Frugal Life. This is episode number 84. Today we're gonna to be talking about tips for sticking to your grocery budget. So please stick around for a few quick words from our sponsor and we'll get right into the show. Okay everyone, so today we're gonna to talk about tips for sticking to your grocery budget. So I just wanna point out, usually on my Monday episodes, I always start with the frugal tip of the week. I decided that starting with this episode, I'm no longer going to do a frugal tip of the week for the episodes that are already a frugal topic. The topic can be your frugal tip of the week. (laughs) So all these tips on saving on your grocery budget or sticking to your grocery budget rather, um, will be the frugal tips for the week because I don't wanna run out of um, frugal tips. It gets, as the weeks go on, it's getting harder and harder um, to think of more good frugal tips and I don't wanna run out. And of course at some point I'm gonna have to start repeating, but I'd like to, Um, keep some frugal aspect of each episode um, if possible Um, so for like the non-frugal topic episodes to keep some frugal aspect to it those will include a frugal tip of the week but this one since it's already frugal topic I'm not going to include a tip of the week this week so anyway let's get into the to this um, information so the the first um, tip for sticking to your grocery budget is Uh, It seems kind of obvious, but this has to be said, um, to make sure that you have a realistic grocery budget. Like if you have, um, say your like weekly budget for like general spending, I don't know, I'm just gonna make up round numbers, is say $300 and you spend maybe $50 on gas, whatever, um, $75 on something else, and then you're like, okay, I didn't even add these up as I'm saying that out loud, so these numbers might not even remotely add up, but the point is that, say say you say, okay, and I have um, $125 left for um, groceries in my weekly money that I can spend, but every week you're spending $175 on groceries. Well, you're setting yourself up for failure if you're saying that you're gonna spend $125 on groceries because that's what you have left in your weekly money that is allotted to be spent, Um, if you've never been able to achieve that number. So if you know that you're just going on overspending and going crazy and you legitimately could get down to 125, then that would be fine. But if you're just saying 125 because that's all that's left in your budget at the end of the week when you see how much money you have to spend, then you really have to look to see where else you can cut back if possible Um, to get your grocery budget to a realistic budget. Because if you set a budget that you're never gonna be able to meet, all that's gonna do is make you feel bad every single week that you came in over budget and there was no way you could ever come in on budget. So there's really no purpose in doing that. So really try and set a truly realistic budget based on what you're spending on groceries. Now, if you have never tracked what you're spending on groceries, that's got to be your first step. The first step before you can even determine what your budget should be is going to have to be to start tracking what you're actually spending and looking at what the cost of everything is. So once you have your um, budget in place and you're starting to be able to stick to it, then that's where you'll start to notice areas where you might be able to pull that back a little bit and get that budget down lower. You know, you might see like, oh, well, if I do um, that, and this is if you're trying to get the budget lower, maybe you're fine with what your budget is and you just want to stick to it so that your other categories, you can, you know, you could just come in and budget on general. Um, You don't have to be trying to lower your grocery budget, but if you are trying to, once you have a realistic budget in place and you know what you're spending, then you could start to look at those other areas to see Um, or not those other areas, but like what you're spending your money on. Like, could you maybe buy um, some less expensive fruit that's on sale instead of just buying whatever you normally buy each week? Like, could you look for other opportunities to save money and bring that cost down a little bit? Um, Okay, my next tip is to try a discount store if there's one available in your area. So when I started shopping at Aldi, it made a dramatic Um, cut in my grocery budget Um, and I had never tried it for the longest time I always saw them around for some reason I had this impression that like the food wouldn't be good and like things would be gross and I, I don't know why I just had this terrible impression of how I thought it would be 
And um, one of the girls I work with um, was telling me about it one time and how she saved so much money. And um, I took my kids in there once before we were going on a road trip and I let them pick out like a whole bunch of snacks and drinks and whatever, just to try stuff out. Cause I figured out oh, just for the hotel or whatever. And everything we got was really good and the prices were dramatically lower, like so much lower. So anyway, this isn't an advertisement for Aldi, but I'm just saying like if you have a similar type store or maybe some kind of discount stores in your area, it's worth at least giving them a try. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But at least give it a try. Maybe there are certain things there you'll like and certain things you don't. And there might be, you know, a good bunch of stuff that you can maybe save a lot of money on. So that's just a, a tip to, to give it a shot if you haven't before. Um, okay, this is probably the most important part of sticking to your grocery budget, and that's to having a plan and sticking to it. If you just go into the grocery store and just kind of go and say, like, okay, I'm going to grab some meat, I'm going to grab some uh, bread, I'm just going to grab some side dishes, and you're just kind of in there and you're just grabbing things and then kind of coming home and then determining what you're going to make with those things afterwards, it's going to be really hard to figure out what you're going to spend once you get there because you really don't have any idea. Like you don't know if you're going to buy like steaks that are a lot more expensive or if you're going to buy chicken breast, it's a lot less expensive or if you're going to do like a cheap meal one night that maybe is just like scrambled eggs and like I don't know, you know, like we'll do like breakfast for dinner or if you're going to do like soup and grilled cheese, like you don't, you don't know what you're going to wind up buying and that makes it extremely difficult to try and stick within a certain dollar amount um, budget. So when you have a meal plan prepared before you can go, before you go grocery shopping, you can create a list of exactly what you need to cook those meals that are on your list. Um, I use an app, and again, none of this stuff is sponsored or anything. I'm just sharing with you what I use. And I've mentioned this before, but I use an app called Meal Board. Um, and basically, it has all my recipes in it. You can put your own recipes in. You can import recipes from other sites. Um, but, but anyway, I use that to place the recipes on the days of the week that I'm going to make them. And then I'm able to create a shopping list from that app. So once I have the list... Like once you have your shopping list of what you're gonna need for the week, first you wanna go and make sure in your house that you don't already have some of those items. Don't just say like, okay, I need two cans of corn for this recipe and put two cans of corn on your list. Well, put it on your list, but then go check like, do I already have one or two cans of corn in the cabinet? Um, if you need chicken breast, do I already maybe have frozen chicken breast in the freezer? Uh, and you can even start, that you actually should um, start your meal plan that way by looking to see what you already have in the house and putting those things on the meal plan and then adding to it from then from there. Um, but anyway, yeah, so you, you definitely want to get your list of the items you need to make the recipes you're going to make for that upcoming week. And it doesn't have to be recipes. Like say if one day for lunch you're going to do frozen pizza, then put frozen pizza on the list. I, I actually even put those items in my meal plan so that they'll come up as like an item that I need to purchase. And then just check and see, do you have those things? Um, make sure you know you go through your fridge, your freezer, and your cabinets with your list and check and see what you have. Because it's really the worst thing to go to the store and buy stuff and come home and as you're putting it away, you're like, oh, I already had that. I didn't need to buy that. Or I already had three of those and now I have four of them. Um, you know, I've, I've definitely done that. Of course, I think we all have, but um, you really want to limit that if you possibly can. So then once you have your list of what you actually are going to purchase when you're at the store, you want to estimate what the cost of those items are going to be. So um, again, I use another app. It's called IntelliList. Honestly, I don't remember if there was a fee for it or not. If there was, it was probably really cheap because I never really spend money on apps. And if I do, it has to be like a very small price and like a one-time price. I've had it for a really long time, so I don't recall if it was free or not. Um, but either way, you could do it on a spreadsheet. You could do it on paper. Um, but what I do is I take my list and then I... I put the items on the list in this app um, because it it stores like what you put in there for the price for that item. So say if I'm buying like a gallon of milk at BJ's, 
it has in there like what the price was for the gallon of milk at BJ's. Now I don't update them. I don't like sit there and keep the the prices updated to exactly what they currently cost. And I mean, I even have things in there where I'll just kind of guesstimate what I think something costs, like $2 or $3 or whatever. It's more just to have a ballpark number of what your cost is gonna be. Like if I know I'm gonna buy a package of chicken, say maybe around four or five pounds, I might just even have in there like chicken breast $10. Um, you know, it's it's really to kind of create a list and have a pretty good estimate of how much the total is going to come to. So, um, you know, I also will add things into that list that I'm going to get that aren't for my meal plan. Like I'll put like, I always buy clementines, so I'll put like clementines on there. I'll put bananas on there. Um, I always have to get vegetables for our guinea pigs, so I put guinea pig vegetables. Like all of those other miscellaneous things. And then I'll usually just have things on there like pretzels, chips, and something else, like just some random things. It doesn't mean I'm necessarily specifically gonna buy pretzels, tortilla chips, whatever, but I know I'm gonna probably grab two or three different snacks. So the, the items in that list will cover the cost of those items. Um, so, you know, you really wanna have that estimate so that you know roughly what you're gonna spend. Um, because once you can see that, if say you add everything up and you're like, holy, this this is like gonna um, come in way over budget, um, you can then start to look back and say, okay, well, and I'm not saying that this is typical, but just for like a example, you know, maybe you could say like, okay, well, this week we were planning to have steak on Monday and shrimp on Wednesday, and um, we just don't have enough money in the budget this week for that. So we're gonna remove those and maybe we're gonna do like hamburgers instead on Monday and we're gonna do breakfast for dinner instead on Wednesday. Um, I'm not saying you have that much extra in, uh, things, you know, high priced items in your budget. It could even be that you just were having chicken all week and you're like, you know what? We're still coming in over. We're gonna have to do like breakfast for dinner one night and I don't know, something else, you know, inexpensive on another night. But at least it gives you the opportunity to see what you're gonna spend. And maybe if if you look at it and you're like, yeah, this is coming in over budget, but these are things that I really needed to do or really wanted to do this week, well then at least you have the opportunity to look at your other um, budget categories and see if there's somewhere you can maybe expect to come in that week or maybe pull back and say, okay, well I really wanted to make these meals this week, so instead of um, having a little money aside for like, to do something fun with the family, we're gonna hold off on that this week and I'm gonna use that money towards the grocery budget. At least gives you an opportunity to make decisions on how you're gonna spend the money. And then another thing that I like to do, um, which I've mentioned before, is that uh, say if I need um, like a laundry detergent and I, I get the big giant ones at like BJ's or whatever, so it's probably like, I don't know, close to $20 or whatever for that. So if I get my list together and I see that this particular week the total cost is coming in on the lower side, I'll say, I'll look at my list, because I always put those things on my list beforehand, like laundry detergent, toilet paper, things like that. As soon as we are getting to where we're gonna need it within like a few weeks to or a month or so, I already put it on my list because I always try and have a backup. That way on the weeks when it does get lower, uh, the, the budget gets a little bit lower based on whatever we happen to need that week. That's the week when I'll buy one of those items. So I'll say like, okay, it looks like we're coming in about $20 under what our budget is. So this week I'm gonna buy the big thing of laundry detergent and get that out of the way. And then maybe another week if we happen to come in under, I'll say, okay, um, this week I'm gonna buy the big giant package of toilet paper or whatever. So it kind of can help you plan um, some of those higher priced items that you might want to try and squeeze into the week or say, okay, well, I can't get them this week because it's really high. Hopefully next week will come in a little bit lower. So that's that. Okay, my next tip is to make swaps while you're in the store if you see a great uh, sale price. So like, you know, just an example, you know, maybe sometimes I might have like fresh green beans is on the meal plan for this week. That's going to be a side dish. But maybe while I'm at the store, I'll see like Brussels sprouts are on sale for like super inexpensive or, you know, whatever, some kind of vegetables on sale, like a super cheap price that winds up being significantly cheaper than the item I was gonna buy. 
I'll kind of know in my mind if if it can be swapped out. Like if I was just doing green beans as a side, there's no reason I can't do Brussels sprouts as a side. Um, of course, if it's something your family likes, but you know what I mean? Like you could just kind of, if there's things like that, that it doesn't specifically have to be that item, um, you know, you can do a switch in the grocery store and wind up saving. And then maybe that gives you a little extra flexibility to buy like an extra um, snack or like maybe a, I don't know, whatever, something else that you might want to get, but you kind of are holding back on. Or you could just save the money. You don't have to purchase something else. Um, you know, same thing with like fruit. Like say if I had planned on getting apples, but I see like cherries are on sale really ex- inexpensive this week or strawberries or something, then I'll grab those instead. So, you know, just kind of keep an open mind while you're in the food store. And as much as you do want to stick to your list, if you see things um, in there that are at a lower price than what you were going to buy and it's something that could be swiped swiped, swapped out, then go ahead and um, consider purchasing that other item. Okay, my next tip is that you don't always need to get the br- the best price per pound, ounce, whatever. So this was something that I had a really hard time with accepting, but, and of course everybody can make their own decisions on whether they feel this is appropriate for them, but I found that I was getting myself over budget very often because certain things that I would buy, I would always feel like I had to get the very best price per pound, per ounce, whatever it was, even if it meant buying a very larger quantity of the item, which then, because it was such a larger quantity, the cost of the product as a whole, while it was cheaper per pound or whatever, or per ounce, the cost of the item would be a lot more. And if I bought many items at those larger quantities and larger prices, I'd wind up coming in over budget for the week. And then I would say, okay, well next week I have to try and come in under budget because I bought all these things, but I got them at a really great price. So, okay, that never worked for me. Whenever I would come in over budget, it was very difficult to come in under budget the next week because often there would be more of those types of things that I would need to buy or whatever would happen. It would just be so hard to try and remember, okay, I came in $15 over last week, so now I have to try and come in $15 less this week, and then, okay, well, I made up $10 of it, but now I gotta try and come in $5 less next week, and the next week I come in over, and it was just really, really difficult to try and manage that way. So, for example, say if I was buying, say if you were gonna buy like, the $10 giant bag of shredded cheese and the $10 or four pound package of butter at BJ's or whatever. So I'm going to spend $20. But if I bought the smaller $3 bag of cheese and and the $3 one pound package of butter and that's all I needed for the week, at this point, I'd rather spend the $6 and get the uh, quantities that I need instead of spending $20, which then took away that $14 from what I can spend on groceries this week. So that's just an example of two items, but if you're applying that to all the different things you're buying and you're always buying these larger bulk items to get the very best price, it can really make it more difficult to manage the grocery budget. Now, I do buy things like meat. Um, I do usually always buy the larger quantities and get the better prices, but I'm gonna use those usually within a two week time period, like the week that I'm buying for, and then the next week they'll go into my meal plan. So they're, they're immediately going to take cost out of next week's budget. Like if I buy um, a package of four chicken breasts and I'm gonna use two of them this week, when I do next week's meal plan, it's gonna include those other two. So that will immediately take a cost off of one day um, of purchasing uh, meat for, you know, during that week. So. I don't worry about things like that. I do I do purchase the larger quantities on um, meat and things like that. And like I said, I also do for like laundry detergent, paper towels, things like that. But those are things I can plan for um, more easily because of that way that I kind of always keep a stock ahead and then just squeeze it in when I have money in the budget, not purchasing it and then trying to make it up the next week. So I just find that It's really, really helped me to accept in certain situations that I might be paying a little bit more per ounce or per pound um, to buy like the the one um, 
you know, serving, not one serving, like one portion, one family size package, whatever, of rice for like one meal than like this giant package, you know, um, or like I said, the butter or things like that. Um, because I really used to feel like I had to get the best price. It's really not that much different usually. And if it can keep you to stick to your budget for that week, I just find it so much more, um, I don't know, it just makes it feel so much better to stick to my budget for the week than having saved a little bit of extra money on um, getting the better price on those items. Now, if I if I was giving myself more flexibility in the budget and I wanted to increase my budget and I could fit all those items in, then sure, I would buy those. But I am trying to stick to a lower budget right now and um, I'd rather come in on budget and just buy the one pound package of butter than the giant one and spend that extra money. That's going to make me go over budget. So anyway, that's that one. Um, The next tip is that you don't have to buy stuff just because it's on sale. So as hard as it can be to pass up a really good deal when you're at the grocery store, if it's going to cause you to go over budget and it wasn't on your shopping list, it's not really worth getting it and spending the money that you didn't plan on spending at the store. If you wind up, you know, where you kind of got everything and you could see that, you know, you saved a little bit of money because you did swap out some of those things and get some stuff at a better price, or um, maybe you just had already gone in and you knew you were going to spend less and you see something that's on sale that you really want, you think it's a really great deal, then go ahead and get it. But if it's going to cause you to go over your budget, it's just not worth it. Because like I said, it's so hard to make it up. It's so hard to catch back up the next week. Um, and the way, and I keep talking about per week. Um, for me, I have found that shopping every week has made it much easier to stick to my budget than to do it every two weeks. Um, everybody's different, of course. That's just been my experience. Um, I used to do every two weeks, but then in between, I'd have to go restock up on like milk and things like that. And then I don't know, like with that extra trip, it just kind of made it more difficult for me to kind of manage the money because I'd have to say, okay, well, I'm spending this much, but I need to make sure I save this much to restock on things during the week. And it just made it more difficult for me. So to me, it seems easier to do one week at a time. I plan my meals for the week. I get my grocery list for the week and I have my budget for the week. And I've actually really been able to stick to it um, pretty good. There there are times when I might go over a little bit, um, but it's usually very small. And then there are other weeks where I come in slightly under, so it really evens out. And um, I just find it easier to do it on a weekly basis like that. Okay, let's see. My last tip is if you are really trying to stick to a grocery budget, I suggest going to the store by yourself if possible. So the reason I say that is because a lot of times you might be the one who is really concerned about the budget, but the other people that come with you maybe aren't, and they might be more opt to start grabbing other extra things or, you know, just saying, hey, can we get this? Can we get that? I'm mainly referring to, in my case, to my um, kids. Um, okay, so they're, I have teenagers and they, they do, so they're not at an age where they don't understand, you know, like they, they understand that I'm trying to stick to a grocery budget and, um, you know, I'll even tell them before we go, you know, if one of them says, oh, can I come with you or whatever? And I'll say, well, you can come, but don't ask me for anything because I have no extra room in this week's budget. I already know if it's going to be a, a close week and I'm not going to want to pick up any extra items. So, you know, I'll say, uh, you know, are you really, I just, you can come if you want, but I'm not saying yes to anything. But it's still hard, like when you get there, it's hard for them because they say, oh yeah, I'm not going to ask for anything. But then they start to see stuff while they're there and it's hard for them to not want to ask. And then when they start asking, it's hard to to always say no. And then you might say like, all right, we'll just get that one thing or whatever, you know. So it's probably easier if they just don't come. But once in a while, if I do have extra money and I know that I can maybe get them something I'll say, okay, well, you can come, but you can only pick out one thing. And I really stick to that. And and I think that in those situations, it's actually kind of good because it makes them really kind of think um, about what they really want and not just grab all these things and say, oh, can we get this? Can we get that? Like they have one thing they can get. So they have to really think about it and make sure they pick out what they really want to get. 
Um, but I've definitely gotten much better when I have said we're not getting anything extra and one of them will want to come. And I really am like, no, we're not getting anything extra. So then they just don't really want to come anymore because they know that I'm not going to get them anything. If I say I'm not getting it, I'm not getting it. And um, then they're just like, well, I'm not going to go if I'm not going to be able to talk her into getting me like some, you know, Gatorade drinks or whatever. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so that's the last tip. Uh, hopefully something in here was useful or helpful to you. Um, if you have any other tips, uh, you know, maybe just you could share um, by messaging me and I could share them in a future episode. Um, you can reach me through facebook.com slash Lola's Frugal Life. You could send a message there um, or like the page uh, just to see the posts. There's also a link there to the private user group. Um, you can you can click the link and uh, submit a request to join or you can go directly to facebook.com slash Lola's Frugal Life. I'm sorry, facebook.com slash groups slash Lola's Frugal Life and submit a request to join. We discuss topics uh, related to things that are discussed on the show. So I would love to have you. Um, also, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a review, that'd be really awesome. And uh, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. and I hope you have a really awesome day.